I have entitled uh, the message for today, The Spirit of Self-Righteousness. As I see it, I ain't scared of nobody. I'll call it out. God's messengers are not weak men. God's called men to lead. And as you see it, by God's grace, God told Jeremiah, don't be scared in faces. As I see it, I'm going to mention it. And I ain't scared of no one but God. So I pray, Lord, that your spirit will take full control. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the highest praise. The glory and honor is due to your most holy name. I pray, Lord, as I am about to deliver the word of your place in my heart, I pray, Lord, that self will die, that I will decrease and Christ will increase. And we'll be careful at the end of the day to give you the honor and praise that you rightfully deserve. For we ask in all these blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. Matthew 5 and verse 20. And the Bible says, and it's for me, say amen. amen. For I say unto you that accept that except your righteousness, your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. And this statement simply means that from an outward appearance, there was no one that kept the law greater than the fire, excuse the scribes and the fire, but yet still the righteousness were like filthy rags. Yes. So we gotta be very careful. And one of the greatest deception in the days of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was just an ascent or the belief in the truth constituted righteousness. So just to be in agreement with the truth constituted righteousness. By the way, without righteousness, we can't enter heaven. Without perfect obedience, we can't enter heaven. And that does not come from us. It comes from Christ. But, in, but the Jewish people, in all of their human experience and their Theological, theological understanding of the word of God, it proved insufficient for the saving of their soul because they were still depending on their own strength, their own might, and their own power to save themselves. But it did not bring forth the genuine fruit of righteousness. It did not bring the genuine fruit of godliness. Now, the Pharisees claim our proud to be called children of Abraham and boast of the fact that they had the oracles of God. Yes. But with all of these advantages that they have, it didn't brought forth transformation of character because they were proud, they were prideful, they were boastful, they were greedy of gain, they were full of lies and hypocrisy while under a form of godliness. Or I claim to doing God's will. And the very same danger exists today with us. Because we take it for granted that we are Christians. Simply because we prescribe or believe certain theological doctrines. Because we believe in present truth or because we belong to Midnight Cry or, or some of these independent groups. But brothers and sisters, if being a part of this group is not transforming our characters, if you haven't brought the truth of God into our lives practically, then what good is the truth? If you're not bringing forth the spirit of the living God, if we are not manifesting our lives the spirit of the living God, then what's the purpose? 
because of the truth. Many of us have not believed and loved the truth the way we should. And as a result, we have not received the power, the grace, and the strength to live this Christian life through sanctification of the truth, brothers and sisters. You see, it will all come down to the lies that we live. Come on now. Not on what we know, but the lies that we live. Many of us, we are like the five foolish virgins. We profess, we profess faith in the truth. Right? Inspiration declare. The class represented by the foolish virgins are not what? They are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believe the truth. But what? Conjunction. But they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit working. They have not fallen upon the rock Christ Jesus and permitted the old nature to be what? Broken up. So they still to self in the religion. Don't claim to be in present truth and advocating the truth. Well, I'm here to declare to you, brothers and sisters, if this truth that we know is not making us more kind, patient, humble, forbearing, heavenly minded, then if our religion is not transforming our characters, then the inspiration said, then you become a curse to who profess in the religion, and then you become a curse to all those around you. And we must be a blessing wherever we go. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit must be manifested among us. Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you that you are what? Worthy of the vocation wherein you are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one in love, endeavoring to keep what? The unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So we must be unified. Amen. The righteousness that Christ preached and teach is one that brought a transformation of character. Conformity to the will of the living God, even the weakest sinner, brethren, when he trusts in Christ and he depends on Christ, brothers and sisters, he can become a conqueror. Amen? As he holds on to God, as he holds on to his mighty arm of power. As he exercises faith in God and repentance through Jesus Christ, as he holds on to his power, brothers and sisters, and when this has been accomplished, True godliness will take possession of mind, body, and soul. Then the external forms of religion accord with the Christian internal purity. Then the ceremonies required in the service of God will not be a bunch of meanest rites as did the Pharisees of old. Where their religion was one where they are just going through the motion. Inspiration declared this religion as cold formalism. And this was the great sin of the Pharisees in the days of Jesus, and it's a great sin of a whole of us today. Again, another powerful statement from God's messenger. The righteousness of the scribe and the Pharisees was that of a what? Selfish character. Selfish character consists of external forms. So they focus more on the external than the internal. The righteousness of Christ requires is internal as well as external. The heart must be purified as Christ cannot be enthroned there. The life must be conformed to the will of God. External forms cannot take the place of its inward piety. 
the Jewish teachers exalted themselves as righteous. They were call all they call all those who differed from them accused a curse and closed the gates of heaven to them, declaring that those who had not learned in their schools were not righteous. So if you don't conform to their self-righteousness, they had an issue with you. But in all their criticism and exaction, with all their forms and ceremonies, they were offense to God. They looked down upon, upon and despised the very ones precious in the sight of the Lord. That was the spirit of the Pharisees in the days of Jesus. And that very same spirit exists today in God's church. Now, God has placed as watchmen, we got to be very watchful and careful of the level of the Pharisees. As fearful watchmen of wars of Zion, we must be fully awake of the spirit of the Pharisees and not allow the spirit of the Pharisees to dwell within the walls of the church. For it's a destructive spirit. Question Is the spirit of the Pharisees in midnight cry? Let's turn our Bibles to as wonderfully read by. Sister Berlin. Let's start by Bible to Luke 18. Luke 18. And follow us, amen. amen. Okay, look 18, and we start reading from verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this publican. I fast twice a week, I, I fast twice in the week. I give tithe of all I possess. And the publican standing afar off wouldn't not lift up so much as his head, his 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 much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be <coughs> exalted. You see when the Pharisee looked in the mirror of God's law, he saw exactly what he wanted to see. He saw his righteousness, he saw his goodness, he saw his worthiness. And he doesn't feel like he's in a sinner, is a sinner in desperate need of pardoning and cleansing. But he thinks that he is righteous. And with his worship, he hopes to secure the favor both of God and man. His worship is motivated by self-interest. Some folks come to church for all different type of reasons, brothers and sisters. Some folks even come to church to worship themselves. As the Pharisee enters the house of the Lord, he's full of self-praise. He walks it. He talks it. He even dresses it, brothers and sisters. Even the way he looks is full of self-praise. And the Pharisee loved to pray aloud in the church. 
But notice in verse, look, look at verse 11, brothers and sisters. Notice in verse 11. That he distances himself from others in the church. As if to say, please don't come close to me for I am holier than thou. Also, also notice the prayer of the Pharisee. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, idolaters, even this publican. Or even this Jamaican. Or even this Trinidadian or this Guyanese. Or even this Yankee. He's full of self-praise. You see, the Pharisee is not judging himself by the high and holy character of God, but he judges his character by the character of other men. So in other words, his focus is not on God, but his focus is on other men. And this is the secret of his self-righteous spirit. And for us to see ourselves, and for us to see our true spiritual condition, brothers and sisters, we must compare ourselves to Jesus. We must compare ourselves to Jesus or else we will always appear good in our own eyes and we will always appear righteous in our own eyes. Notice in verse 12. Look, look at verse 12, brothers and sisters. As he goes on to declare his righteousness, he declares, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. And if you're in present truth, you'll probably be like, well, I wear my skirt down to the ground. Oh, 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 I don't eat no meat. Oh, I have a country home, brothers and sisters. Come on. His religious experience is only skin deep. His righteous, his, his, here is a religious experience that does not touch the soul. Because all it is seeking is, 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 is not seeking the high and holy character of Jesus Christ, but it's full of love of for self. And when we are studying the life of Christ, the life of Christ is a life of love, mercy, and compassion towards all men. Notice also, brothers and sisters, that there is no thankfulness to God and what he has done for him. But instead, he has a long list of his personal achievements. And sometimes some of these pastors, we know, before they come to preach, they have a long list of their personal achievements. I remember going to churches on conference lines and Sometimes the pastor comes to preach, and before he comes to preach, he have he went and did four years, he did an MBC and an NBA and a CNN and an NBC. He have all these as if this is the qualification for him to speak the word of God, brothers and sisters. But thank God Almighty, brothers and sisters, in these last days, God is doing a work all from the ordinary. Amen. God is taking humble instruments, and they will do a great work for Him. Amen. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. God will so organize things that God is going to use humble instruments to do a great book and they will glorify the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, the Pharisee in his spiritual blindness places a very high regard on himself or on his self worth And his attitude is very clear. Y'all gotta be thankful to have someone like me worshiping at this church. Attitude stinks, brothers and sisters. And there are whole other folks that have this very same attitude, brothers and sisters. When they come to the church of God, they have the same attitude as if the walls of the church don't fall down if they are not here. Notice that he doesn't come to God with a broken, contrite spirit. As the psalmist David declared, the sacrifice of God and a broken spirit, a broken and contrite, oh God, thou will not despise. So he comes.
armed God in the armor of his own self-righteous spirit. And notice also that he never, he never ever asked God for forgiveness of sin. Notice, brothers and sisters, because he believed in his heart that he has kept the law perfectly, so there is no need for him to repent. He knows nothing of the holiness and his high perfection of character. But if you have to, but if you have just taken one look, one good look at the character of God, you have seen his own sinful condition. You have seen his own spiritual poverty and his own self-righteous spirit. But oh no, he trusted in himself. And it's in these closing hours of earth's history that we must know the precious, precious lessons of this trust of self and more dependence upon Christ who is our righteousness. Amen? Amen. The pillar of inspiration gives a powerful quotation. It says, Whosoever trusts in himself that he is righteous will do what? Will despise others. Not might enough, but will despise others. As a Pharisee judging himself by other men, so he judges other men by his, by himself. His righteousness is estimated by theirs, and the worse they are, the more righteous by contrast he appears. His self-righteous leads to accusing other men he condemns as transgressor of God's law. Thus, thus, he is making manifest the very spirit of Satan, the accuser of the brethren. With this spirit, it is impossible for him to enter into communion with God. He goes down to his own destitute of the divine blessing. Is there a Pharisee in here today? Now, in contrast, you have the publican who separates himself also not because he feels righteous, because he feels condemned. And he feels kind of strange being in the presence of, for worship. The publican saw his sinfulness. He saw nothing but himself to God because he himself was a transgressor of God's law. And when we come in the presence of the Holy God, we must see the nothingness in ourselves. We must see ourselves as nothing, brothers and sisters. As long as we think of ourselves to be something, we have problems. And there are going to be problems in the church. And we know the, the publicans, they were tax collectors, they were known as murderers, thieves, and adulterers by the Jews. his unworthiness and his sinful polluted condition. He was grieved at his own sinful condition, brothers and sisters. He knew that he had absolutely nothing within himself to commend himself to God. Why is the Pharisee describes his righteousness, the publican bears God for mercy to escape God's justice and judgment. For he demands the life of the sinner. So his head is down to the ground. He's not even looking up to heaven, brothers and sisters. He's not lifting up his head up to heaven. But he smacks himself upon the breast and says, Lord God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. It's a short prayer, but it's a powerful and an effective prayer. And when you're feeling guilty, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. When you're feeling shame, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. When you're feeling Lonely, depressed. When the cares of life are upon us sometimes, brothers and sisters. God be merciful unto me, a sinner. You see, a publican did not compare himself to another man. But rather he compared himself to Jesus. You see, it's very easy for us to compare ourselves to other people. 
And that way we're going to see something within ourselves to glory. But when we begin to compare ourselves to Jesus, we recognize that there's nothing within us good to glory. Self must be laid in the dust. Self is the problem, and self will always be the problem. That's why sometimes we got issues among us. We don't understand this destructive nature of self. Satan will always give us a justified reason to do a wrong act. This little red monster in our mouth. It's a deadly fire. It's a wall of iniquity. It cannot be contained this tongue. So the will of God tells us. Even so the tongue is a little member. And both said great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a wall of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiled the whole body and settled on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, of birds, of serpents, and of things in the earth is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. It is full of deadly poison, brothers and sisters. Dare we? Blessed be God. Even the Father, where we curse we men, we are, are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. To be so. And the way the public was able to see his spiritual condition, he took the focus of himself. The Bible said that the publican went home more justified than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. For God resisted the proud, but he gave grace unto the humble. Amen? Amen. He resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. And this very same demonic spirit of self-righteousness exists in Laodicea. Right? Let's turn to um, Revelation chapter 3. Because we can recognize that the very same spirit exists in Laodicea. Revelation chapter 3. And verse, let's look at verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things say the Amen, the, the, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation. I know thy works that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would that thou would cut cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, Neither, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Look, look, at, your, look, 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 look at the attitude of the Odysseans. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and I have need of nothing. And there is not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. We give the solution. I counsel thee to buy of me gold trying the fire. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and know thy eyes with eyes of that thou mayest see. Amen. Amen? Amen. So this same spirit exists in legal this year today. And when the publican put away self, brothers and sisters, he was able to see his own spiritual condition. Now, inspiration declares all sins that men may commit. The sin of self-righteousness is the most dangerous. D. 
There is nothing so offensive to God or so dangerous to the human soul as pride and self-sufficiency. Of all the sin, it is the most hopeless and the most incurable. It's also the most blinding because people never see themselves. But they always see everybody else. And the sin of present true believers and main true believers is self-righteousness. And I say it with no apology. Mainstream believers have trampled upon the pillars of the faith. They have lowered the standard of righteousness. They have disregarded the counsels. They have allowed all winds of doctrine to come into the church. But here the mistake present true believers believe. Present true believers that if we take where they are fallen, if we take the pillars of the faith, and we take the, um, the, the reforms and we, and, and we go use it as a means to earn our salvation. So one goes to one extreme and the other goes to the other extreme. Looking at, at the reforms as a way of earning their salvation. And we got to be very careful. Look at these quotations here. It's only who he who knows himself to be a sinner that Christ can save. Amen. You hear that? Amen. We got to see ourselves. Yes. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Luke 4 18. But they that are whole need that a physician. Luke 5 31. We must know our real condition. Yes, sir. Or we shall not feel our need of Christ and help. We must understand our danger. Or we shall not or, or we shall not flee to the refuge. We must feel the pain of our wounds or we should not desire healing. We must have a knowledge of ourselves, a knowledge that will result in contrition before we can find pardon and peace. The Pharisee felt no conviction of sin. The Holy Spirit could not work with him. His soul was encased in his self-righteous armor with the arrows of God barred with true aim by the angel hands failed to penetrate. Another quotation. It is not only at the beginning of the Christian life that we that that this renunciation of self is to be made. At every advanced, advanced step, however, it is to be renewed. All our, good, all our good works are dependent on a power outside of ourselves. Therefore, there is need to be, to be a continual reaching out of the heart after God, a continual earnest and heartbreaking confession of sin, and a humbling of, of the soul before him. By only by constant renunciation of self and dependence on Christ can we walk safely. Amen. The list may confess, express poverty of soul that the heart does not acknowledge while speaking to God of poverty of spirit. The heart may be swelling with its with the conceit of its own superior humanity and exalted righteousness. In one in one way only can true knowledge of self be obtained. We must behold Christ. Amen. Amen. 
The reason we understand this dangerous thing called self, we must behold Jesus Christ. It is ignorance of him that makes men so lifted up in their own righteousness. When we contemplate his purity and excellence, we shall see our own weakness and poverty and defects as they really are. We shall see ourselves lost and hopeless, clad in the garments of self-righteousness like every, like every other sinner. We shall see that if we are ever saved, it, it, will, it, it will not be through our own goodness, but through God's infinite grace. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if someone has the spirit of a self-righteous character, it will be a fruit. Just look at some of the symptoms of a self-righteous spirit. The first symptom that I've outlined here is that folks are never wrong. Those who possess a self-righteous spirit are never wrong. When you try to bring light to them, they always find some way to justify their position. And we gotta be careful. And because they are never wrong, there's no need to apologize. The spirit of self-righteousness here to say, I'm sorry. I hate to say I'm wrong and you are right, brothers and sisters, and this person should not be amongst us. As Christians, we must be honest with ourselves. And if we are wrong, we are wrong. You know, symptom of a self-righteous spirit is harsh criticism and fault-finding. The same spirit that we saw in the Pharisees of all brothers and sisters and they are those that are darkening the character of a brother and sister so that they can shine. And we gotta check ourselves. Inspiration declared but gradually a change came. The believers began to look for defects in others. In the early church. They're looking for defects in others. Dwelling upon mistakes. Giving place to unkind criticism. They lost sight of the Savior and His love. They became more strict in regard to outward ceremonies more particularly about theory than the practice of faith. In their zeal to condemn others, they overlook the what? They overlook what? Their own, their own errors. Because the focus is not on others. They, they lost the body love that Christ had enjoyed. And saddest of all, they were unconscious of their loss. They did not realize that happiness and joy were going out of their lives and that having shut the love of God out from their hearts, they would soon walk in darkness. Because we don't see ourselves. Symptom of self righteousness that folks think that they're better than everybody else. We are so caught up among ourselves and with ourselves and judge ourselves among ourselves, brothers and sisters. And this is the secret of a whole lot of our self satisfaction. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to call out it is, you know. Go out there, gentlemen, don't be scared of their faces. Lay the world down. We can't see our own condition. We got to see our own selves. But when we begin to compare ourselves to Jesus, for he is the standard of righteousness. 
And when we begin to compare ourselves to Jesus, we will finally realize our true spiritual condition. The fact that we are poor, miserable, blind, and naked. miserable, blind, and that's our condition. And a desperate need of Jesus saving grace. Another symptom I see of self is a disrespect for authority. Another symptom of, of, of um, self-righteousness is, a, is, a, is an unthankful spirit. There's a young lady who, nice, sweet, humble young lady, who has a family and two children. She has a son who has a disability. <clears throat> and she is a wonderful young lady. She takes care of the home, takes care of the family. She homeschools her child. And she has a son who is always acting up. And the husband was supposed to be there as he should. is not there because he had to go out and work. But then she finds time during the day to go out and shop for spoons, napkins, plate, um, 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 utilities. She does everything for a particular ministry. And then she comes home and takes care of her family there's a menu to feed a particular ministry. By the way, she gets no pay for it. Right? And when she brings what she has prepared with love, folks are saying it's too much starch, too much salt, too much this, too much that. Some of us, we are not Christians. Some of us, we are not Christians. You ain't see the effort that was made. Yeah. Oh, is he starch? <laughs> you serious? Before we come to God with a thankful spirit, and then we say, sister, well, next time it's Y and Z. But no. No. It's, that is not Christianity. Some folks have been another sign of self righteous There's just power struggling the church. Folks believe that this is where things must be done. And if you don't subscribe to that, the power talk and demonize the leadership. Is that the spirit of Christ? As if we don't always agree on every single thing. When they don't get their way to turn and disrespect the leadership who are working day and night to prevent by God's grace a little hub for all those in the conference churches who tired the madness going on, they have a nice little worship place they can come to. But we ain't seeing that. But the Bible has given to us the example of Korah. And it says, warning to all of us who believe God has called them to lead. Be careful the earth to open up and swallow us. With this self-righteous spirit also come a spirit of legalism. A spirit where individuals feel as if by their own works they can contribute to their salvation. Inspiration declare a legal religion can never lead souls to Christ. Amen. So if we are so holy, let's see how much people are coming to Christ. For it is a Christless, for it's a loveless, Christless religion. Fasting or prayer that is actuated by self-justifying spirit is an abomination in the sight of God. The psalm assembly for worship, the round of religious ceremonies, the external humiliation, the imposing sacrifices proclaim that the dwarf these things regard himself as righteous and as, as entitled to heaven. 
But it is all a deception. Our own words can never purchase our salvation. Now, the leadership and the headship of the church, God has given to the men. Am I saying anything wrong? No. The headship and the leadership of the church, God has given to men. That's a position he has not given to women. And the woman is there in need to respect the leadership of the church. And if you see us doing something, call us over in love and talk to us. Don't go. No. The few, there's a few good men left in Adventism. Hold on to them. Women need to know their place and they need to be humble. It's an abomination in the sight of God for a woman to usurp authority over a man. And this is what's killing us. The spirit of humility. I know Aaron. I'm not here to say things to please nobody. I'm here to please God. Amen. And him only I will please. Amen. One of the characteristics of the virtuous woman of God is that she is very humble and submissive. Society has it that when you are humble, you are weak. But I'm here to declare to you, brothers and sisters, that once you are humble, you have power. You have the power of Christ with you, brothers and sisters. I'm here to declare to you that a woman who are humble, she's a strong and powerful woman. There's nothing more beautiful in the world than a humble, sweet Christian woman. Ain't nothing in the world more beautiful than a sweet, humble, Christian woman. And to a man who loves the Lord is very, very attractive. Let us not allow this spirit of this feminist movement to come into the church and affect our minds. Because it's affecting the body. I remember when I was talking to couple of young ladies before I met my wife. I was talking to one who was a doctor, one who was a judge, yes, sir. one who was a social worker, mm. and they wanted the doctor to show me how much money she made. Mm. But when I met my wife, I kicked all of them out. Yeah, I because she was humble. Amen. I saw someone I could work with and build with. I don't care how much money they have. That's it's good. not going to last. Yes. So I'm just trying to say something. Women need to humble themselves. Yeah. God has called a woman to be humble. He hasn't called women to hold this position. To dominate men. This is the word of God. I don't care. Amen. God has placed men as leaders in this church as watchmen. And we have, we have taken a solemn oath to never fall asleep at our post. Because if the watchman falls asleep, then a whole lot of people could die. So whenever we see the enemy of soul launching an attack upon God's church, we must sound the alarm and blow the trumpet in Zion. And if anybody refuses to do it, by God's grace, I'm willing to do so. Another evil has come into God's cross, church. That we must guard against is fanaticism and extremism. Because if we are not vigilant and watchful and careful, brothers and sisters, some of us are heading down that very same path. And to counteract this evil demonic spirit of self righteousness, every man, woman, and child must humble himself. In Jesus' name. Amen. This must be our prayer. Search me, God. And know my heart. Try me. And know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. 
and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. This should be a humble cry. There's a need for humility. Will of God declared, if my people, if midnight cry, whatever present through global ministry of ventilum, if my people are called by my name, shall what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I will say, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word of God given us counsel. Yes. And the grace of God we ought to follow it. Amen. Bible goes on to say, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. 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 Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. humility. For God resisted the proud, but he gave grace to the humble. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, and that he may exhort you in due time. This is the word of God. Amen. And so the message that God designed to humble our hearts, a lot of us don't want it. It's the message of Christ our righteousness. That's the message he's designed for the church to prepare us for what's about to come upon the, the earth. Justification by faith. I will always bring it. It is the work of God in laying the glory of man, woman, child in the dust. Long as you see yourself as something, Christ can't work with you. And doing for man that which is not in his power to do for himself. When men see their own wealth, wealth, nothingness, they are prepared to be clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So I bring it home today. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is the word of God. You know. And are we accepted or rejected? God is not going to force us. But in order to death for the truckers, and we must be humble. When the time of trouble begins, any element of self in us, we, we, we not going to make it. We allow ourselves to rise up, rise up in our hearts, and Satan will always give us a righteous way to do our own act. And we gotta examine ourselves and we gotta be humble. I'm not here to beat nobody for I love you guys. I love you guys dearly. You're on my mind all week long. But when I stop you, I have no friends. I have no wife. I have no husband. I have no wife. I have no brother. I have no sister. I'm just a servant of the Lord. As the Lord put the message on my heart, I will deliver it. Speak it. Jesus' We need to be humble. As little few, the few men that are around, yes, we may make mistakes, but it's not to trample upon each other. The love of Christ must be seen. No one here is perfect. No one here can claim perfection. We are all striving by God's grace, and we are here to encourage and love each other along. Amen. People can say, oh, can I think my brother should not the same, but you can never say and never show your love. You could never say that. You can cut me under, tear me apart. I know it. Once you decide to lead, the Bible says that Moses was the humblest man upon the whole earth, but yet still people have a problem with him. So once you decide to lead, you're going to criticize, they're going to talk about you, but you 
never let me make sure the grace of God. Amen. They keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the word from the throne of grace today is that we be humble. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet if the message was received. Amen. Amen. Brethren, you heard for yourself. We need humbleness. We need togetherness. We need true, true unity amongst ourselves. And yes, we are here physically, but spiritually we have not we are not of one mind. And the enemy will use every inch, every inch that we give him, he will take it and he will use it to destroy us. Right? Elder Ella made it clear we are not perfect. Right? No one here today. Right? Listen. No one that is here today is fully reflecting the, the character of Christ as it should be. Amen. Nobody here. Yes. Nobody here is infallible. Yes. Correct? Yes. Nobody here has never sinned. Yes. 